Hey guys, we have an awesome video today where we are chopping hay and a tractor blew up. You're gonna wanna stay tuned. Hit that like button while you're here. So I'm just going through and emptying out my tank. You can see it's a little bit weedy here. And what I'm doing is I basically emptied my boom out, ran my chemical out, like literally almost perfect. And now I'm just going through, I rinsed my tank once and now I'm rinsing it again, just putting diluted chemical out there. I feel like that's better than just dumping it on the ground. So we're gonna put diluted chemical out here. That's the second rinse. So I think that's good enough. And then I will uh, head home and now I'm out. Now I'm out, so let's head home. We're gonna drive by right by the chopping crew. Maybe we'll fly the drone, we'll see. This is just neat. It'd be kind of cool to go through that sometime. You guys think that'd be kind of cool in an abandoned school video? Can't imagine the critters and whatnot that are living in there. Ugh. All right, let's head to Preston. Man, everyone just is so friendly today. Everyone's waving. Must be everyone's in a good mood because it's really nice weather right now. Uh, hot weather, but it's better than being cold. 85, not too humid, a little breezy. It's beautiful out. Beautiful corn going weather too. This corn is gonna shoot up. Sweet, there's a haggy. Spraying some post emerge on corn. Cool. I don't think that's our neighbor that I recognize. Looks like an older haggy with a poly tank. Either way, sweet sprayer. And up here is where we were chopping. I'll show you guys here in a bit, but we might be able to see them still chopping. Maybe not. Nathan's out. Nathan finished up, so they might be have one load going. We'll find out. There's the chopper, so I'm guessing they're done. I don't see Pat. Here's what they chopped. There's that big waterway right there. And then there's a big 10 acre piece up ahead on the left that we're gonna plant with corn. Chopped right here on the left. RNL trucking. About 10 acres right here, so we're gonna work this up and plant it corn. There's our truck. That stuff was grassy, it filled up. Pretty big bag. And this corn is really gonna grow fast. It worries me because we already have the skinny tires on yet. A lot of our corn's gonna get ahead of us here quick. We gotta spray the corn before it gets above two feet because then we start doing some real damage. But we still have a little bit of beans to plant there. Still have like 20 acres of corn to plant. It's like 40 acres of beans back there. And all this corn is growing like weeds, but not like weeds though, like actual corn. It's growing like corn. Yeah, that's what it's doing. Neighbor over here is running an 8R or an 80, 8030 series John Deere on a baler. You gotta do what you gotta do. Just got back to the farm. Put fuel on while this thing's cooling down. We'll put this thing in the shed and see what's going on. Let's go ahead, pull this thing over near the shop, take that bottom step off. Nathan's gonna give me a ride to the blue pickup and you'll see. Can you start this thing without ether? Nope. Nice. Oh. Someday, hopefully. It's every time no one eats There you go. Come on, Bessie. You jinxed yourself. I might have. Yeah. Ready? Yep. Go. So there goes Nathan in our chopper truck, TX220. So he's gonna head to Long's now, go pick up his dad, run his dad back to the chopper. I believe Brian is raking ahead of the chopper. And there we got probably three or four more loads to chop tonight. But what I need to do is, as you guys saw, the 190 Maxim went down. Basically what ended up happening was the, the disc bind sheared sheared a couple teeth on the drives which took the uh, which basically threw everything out of alignment and when it did that it actually broke a couple uh clamshell hubs or turtles whatever you want to call them and broke a couple discs while it did that too or blades i should say and actually one of those blades shot forward and and popped the tire on the 190 so the 190's tire is blown so i'm going to go get the flatbed we actually have to load up our tractor to take it down to the tire shop because for some reason there's no tire truck there's not enough tire trucks out around they said it'd be next week until we get it fixed if we can't haul it in so we're gonna haul it in because we need that tractor fixed because it's we gotta make hay while the sun shines and i gotta get my seatbelt on i know i know safety first there's a nice john deere r4044 i'm guessing river valley peace big boom 120 footer huge Let's hook up the uh, flatbed. 
Oh, about. Let's get her going. Last time I drove this, I blew a tire. So let's not do that. So I just hold the skid loader down with Curtis. He's gonna start scraping up some yards. So this is gonna be like a, our final more or less push for manure because we're gonna get all of our hay cut in the next couple days if we can keep our tractors running. And hopefully like we have that 40 acres of ground down here that we're gonna haul manure on. So hopefully we're gonna have all that stuff done. So we're gonna have to have all of our manure scraped up because it's gonna have to last till second crop hay, which is another month. So Curtis is gonna start scraping up manure and he's gonna start hauling haul manure over the next couple days. Looks like Brian's gonna go cut hay with the 1066, all reliable. Well, um, I thought Brian was gonna go cut hay, but I guess not. He took off in the uh, 1066 in the hay buying heading back towards the farm. So I don't where he's going. He might be just going back to go switch tractors or who knows. Either way, I think it's time to load the 190 on the back of the flatbed. And I think that's either going to go to DeWitt or if it's or it's going to go home. Not quite sure where it's going to go. We'll find out. Let's load it up. bear hopefully I won't wreck it on the way home this is gonna be interesting with a capital int oh good lord <laughs> this is a heavy heavy load I'm gonna take my time with this back in the boondocks down at our long farm we're gonna make this piece of corn here in the next couple days for rains next they're getting her chopped off and gonna get her planted this is some of our more marginal ground, as you can tell. Dad planted this uh, last week, I want to say, last Thursday. We just cut it today. Oh, sh he's waiting for me. Better get going. As you can tell, it is hilly. Made it safely. Bad day to be a 190 Maxim. So what the plan is for that is Pat's actually going to take it up to Kunau's tomorrow. The AC doesn't work and it. God bless Brian's soul for running that thing without AC. So he's going to take that up there. The parts got in, so he's going to take that up there to Kunau's and get it fixed tomorrow. And at least get the AC fixed and they're going to change the tire while they're up there. So I, I'm going to actually see, I'm going to walk over to the bagger, probably start the bagging tractor up. And then I might walk all the way out back to get the uh, side by side that's sitting way out in the back. We'll see. But I'm actually going to take the chopper truck down to Pat's, down at Long's, because I'm going to run the chopper truck for the last load. When the window is up, it gets steamy in here real quick. We don't have the nice trucks like all the other custom chopper guys do. We rough necker. I guess I don't know if the other guys have air conditioning, it'd be pretty tough. Hold a little fine. Hold that little fine hay. The dust gets in there pretty easily. So what we've been doing is we've been chopping two fields of first crop hay, three fields actually technically, and the fields that we chop we're actually going to kill off and plant corn into. So we're chopping it because we need a we need feed because we didn't have our pit sile last year because you know we ripped it up because of concrete. So that's why we're bagging it. That's what we're doing. We're bagging it with our 5088 on the bagging tractor and an ag bag, 10 footer, 10 foot diameter, 250 foot long bag, I believe. So I'm gonna start this unit up and then start walking. I was wondering why it was so crooked. Well, they actually kind of leaned it around the bag. Well, I leaned it around this first bag. This corn's looking pretty good though. V3, that's what it looks like. It's at the third collar, not too shabby. When I went through here spraying this, I actually got really close to this bag. You can kind of see how close Pat planted to it. I got even closer with my boom. But I mean, he, his planter leans out another foot, foot and a half. My boom got really close. Let's get hoofing. So that corn's at like V3. These soybeans are just starting to emerge. Kind of see, there they are. Hello, little buddies. Corn pops out like this, soybeans pop up like this. So the soybeans are just popping up in this field. Noise. 
and there's Brian. I was wondering where he was cutting. I thought he was going to cut this hay right here or hay out back, but I hear a buzzing noise. That's him way over there. I don't think that's our ground, so I wonder what he's cutting. I don't know. When you're low on the totem pole, you don't get uh, told a lot. That's fine by me. You can see where I sprayed this field. The corn was up, if you guys remember. Carded that video right here. You can kind of see, you can see my marks because I sprayed right in this direction. I'm going to walk up there and actually see how much I dinged the corn when I did that. Soybeans. Oh yeah, it definitely dinged it. Oh, we had some frost damage here. See that brown leaf? That means it got killed off. Some of that, some of this plant got killed off in the frost. But you can also kind of see where I ran over. It dinged this corn. That's what some of these plants look like. You know, they're about the size of my fist. But that plant got ran over. You can kind of see it dinged it some. What do you do? Let's uh, get the side by side and head that back. Take that back. We'll probably bail this on Saturday, more than likely. Just got cut yesterday, I believe. And this also got cut, but we chopped it. When you chop it, you want to cut. You want to cut it and then chop it right away within a day, so it's still got some moisture in it. That way, when it ferments, it breaks down, and that moisture helps it turn into some nice, pro some nice feed for our cows. But when you put up hay, you don't want to put up wet hay because it doesn't store worth a dang. You want to put up dry hay, so that way it stores outside, but not any special procedures. All right, let's go. He's unloading in the bag. Getting pretty dry at this point of the day. Oh, got a little backup. It's so dry, it doesn't feed as good when it's that dry either, as you can see there, up in the hopper. It's just not packing in well. There's hardly any moisture to it, but Later in the day, we just caught it this afternoon, but that's how it goes. Can't help it. It's so dry out. Oh, hey, Ron. I'm filming him, he's filming me. So now I'm uh, gonna drive a chopper truck and I'm gonna finish off. We got one more load to finish that bag and to finish off long, so let's get her done. This right here is almost sticking out. Yeah. We're just about up to the long farm. This thing is a 10 speed. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So just about up to the long farm. I'm gonna get loaded up and that'll be the last chopping load of probably the last hay we'll do this year. We don't chop a lot of hay. We mainly bale it all. Let's go ahead and get it going. There's the chopper. This is the field that I sprayed. Coincidentally, I got stuck back in the corner of that field. Let's get her going. My first chopping load of the year. I don't get to do a lot of chopping just because I travel a lot for work for deer. So I get a relish it every time I do it. Love it. I closed my window because I got full of hay. truck isn't always the funnest thing to drive because every time you kill it you have to jump it with ether and it's easy to kill on the hills you really got to give it some throttle all right let's get her going last 10 feet
crazy how much this corn grew in a day. You couldn't even see this corn last night when I left after the stuck sprayer. And now you can easily row it. Pretty crazy, especially, well, I mean, when it's 85 degrees hot and sunny and humid, corn's really gonna pop up, which makes me worried about the farm we have down south. That corn's probably a foot, foot and a half tall already. So we need to get that sprayed. So hopefully that's Saturday's job. But anyway, I'm gonna head out, guys. It's 7.30. Uh, time for me to get out of here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Heart Tongue Family Farms. And of course, as always, ta-ta for now.